Hello, everybody. Uh, so, thanks for the invitation. Uh, is there something magic about Munich? And uh, probably some of you still remember this uh, Rubik's magic cube. And you twist and turn and transform, and you usually end up with no solution. So let's talk about Munich as city and migration. If you think of Munich, uh, probably some images come to your mind, and they probably look something like this. Uh, good football team, great beer, which is in line with the Prague beer, uh, fast car maybe. Uh, but what is often forgotten is that 41% uh, of all Munich residents share a migration background, and 26% are foreign nationals. So we actually uh, will see a Munich population um, which uh, is probably half of the population uh, does share a migration background in the future. At the same time, and the driving force for our urban development and the main challenge is growth. Uh, maybe it's ridiculous compared to mega cities like uh, Guangzhou or Mexico, uh, but for us, um, expecting 200,000 uh, more people coming in the next uh, 14 years and uh, having a, yeah, a increase of population of 27% uh, in 25 years only is a major uh, impact for the city. And uh, what happens is that uh, at the same time we're running out of uh, space for uh, further urban development. So um, the land prices are going up all the time and they even doubled since 2008. And that means that uh, just normal people like you and I maybe, uh, the middle class is driven out of the, the market actually. So in terms of planning, um, we have to deal with that. And uh, we set up a long-term uh, settlement strategy, which is uh, basically focused on three parts. Uh, further urban development on the urban fringe, on the city limits, where it's still possible. Restructuring uh, industrial sites uh, for housing. But the main part is uh, densification strategies in existing parts of the city. And these planning concepts are flanked by uh, extensive uh, budgetary programs for affordable housing. Uh, just let me name one or two of them. Uh, we have a, the, the most extensive uh, public housing program in Germany with over a billion euros spent by the city itself for creating affordable housing in five years. And uh, we have a rule that uh, private developers are obliged to take a share of the infrastructural costs and to reserve 30% of their development project for social housing. So uh, that was just what we usually do in Munich. That was the, the challenge we are facing all the time. But then uh, this migration thing happened. Uh, somehow and very quickly and we had to even speed up uh, everything we do and play another city game. And that was this one magic moment uh, which happened when all those masses of people came to Munich mainly in uh, late summer, September last year and without any planning. They were uh, welcomed very, very warmly. There were thousands of volunteers uh, receiving them welcome at uh, Munich uh, Central Station when they arrived in the trains. And uh, I think that's the, uh, the most important thing about it. And that's maybe one of the best pictures we have about it. Um, so let me get back to Rubik's Magic Cube. Um, this means transformation very quickly. And there is a, I, ha I actually had to look up the word, a quintillion of possibilities to turn around this cube. Uh, but uh, there are people who do this, to, to, they're really able to solve it very quickly. But let me give you another number. We had some uh, 126,000 refugees arriving in Munich last year. And they, um, yeah, Munich at that time was a transition town, so there 
most of them were moving somewhere else, but still um, you had to deal with them. Uh, 20,000 arriving on one super weekend in September and 13,000 arriving on one single Sunday. So where, where do you give them shelter? That's the question. And um, so if you Google how to solve a Rubik's Cube, there's some, some interesting points about uh, urban development maybe as well. Uh, first is experiment. Uh, play with the cube and get familiar with it. Um, analyze what the, the structure is and uh, divide it in, into certain layers and then solve one layer without mixing up or messing up uh, the already solved pieces, which is true for urban development as well. And uh, finally, practice. Practice the moves and memorize how you did it. So what, what did we actually do? The first thing was to deal with uh, people just being there in the city and giving them shelter. So we had to very quickly uh, set up um, a series of facilities where they could sleep uh, for several days, weeks or months. And there was uh, 120 of those facilities in Munich. And second step, Munich is not a transition town anymore. Uh, it's now a place uh, where people will stay uh, for several years. And uh, so we set up an immediate housing program, uh, which means we uh, want to build 3,000 uh, dwellings uh, in the next three years on top of our uh, regular um, targets. And it's very difficult. We're desperately seeking for uh, areas where we could do this development rather quickly. And the idea is that um, it's only a small number of dwellings uh, concentrated at the location, so we don't want to um, yeah, build ghettos, actually, and it's about uh, spatial integration, so it's only smaller communities of maybe around 100 dwellings each. Uh, and uh, within the building, the uh, apartments are mixed, so it's around 50% for refugees and around 50% for regular social housing applicants. And there are family apartments as well as uh, single apartments. And um, then there's uh, places for common use and the social assistance at the location. So that's uh, the first project. We are just beginning to start the building and we hope to finish it by the end of the year. And uh, the interesting thing is that it's, we didn't know where to build, so uh, the experiment was to build it above a parking lot. So Actually, the, the parking lot is still there, and the building is uh, based on pillars, actually, for 100 units. Um, and, and can you imagine that neighbors are complaining because they're losing, like, four uh, <laughs> car parks? Uh, so, anyway, um, another uh, project, um, totally different, is based in these uh, three houses owned by the city. They should have um, been torn down uh, because of poor standard, but then an NGO came up uh, fighting gentrification, actually, and they now uh, had a concept to run a cafe, which is run by refugees in the ground floor, have a consultancy for asylum seekers and uh, refugee housing uh, above. And it's very um, centered in the heart of the city. So given the challenge we're facing, I think we have not done too bad, but could we have done better? And I think uh, for the future, uh, the most important thing is that we should maintain and keep up um, this welcoming culture because that's the, the basis uh, for everything. Doug Sanders says the arrival city is self-built, but if we look at Munich, um, there's not one refugee building something in Munich. And even at this conference, I haven't heard of uh, one immigrant uh, talking about his um, his situation. So uh, let's give them a voice. Let's not plan for people, but let them planning uh, do planning. Not, let's not talk about about them. Let's talk with them. Okay. So this is where responsibility for the place um, yeah comes up, and this means real integration. So as a conclusion, this uh, transforming game is is not a game. Actually, it's uh, quite uh, quite. Uh, as we say, real-life parties in New York or something. <laughs> um, 
it's rather a process than a solution, uh, but there's plenty of encounters to be made and potentials to be raised. And I think it's, uh, for the future, it's a lot about doing, let us build this city and not talk about of we and them. Thank you.